Welcome back into the show, everybody. On the phone right now, I have no one other than Danny Boone from Rehab. Danny, what's going on, brother? There ain't nothing to it, Eli. Just uh, chilling at the house, man. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. That's what I like to hear, man. It's a good way to spend a Friday night. No doubt. Yeah, man, and it's good to talk to somebody from Middle Georgia, too. I spent quite a bit of my childhood down there. You're from Warner Robins, right? Exactly. I spent a lot of time in Hawkinsville, man, so just right down the road. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know where Hawkinsville is. Always loved Warner Robins, though, man. I had a lot of birthday parties there at Stevie B's, you know, went to the mall. My mom worked there, got a bunch of family there. Always appreciated old war town. Well, I hear you. You down there from where old Jeezy's from, ain't it? One of my buddies worked for a, uh, a, a medicine company down there, and he would actually deliver uh, medicine to young Jeezy's grandma. Not a lot of people know that Jeezy's from Hawkinsville. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, you know, you don't want to put it out there, y'all. You know, hey, where are you, you know, I, rep in Hawkinsville, the rap game probably is weird. Yeah, for yeah. for him to say he was from Atlanta was a little bit better of a way to go, I guess. But man, that area has always been so rich in music, man. With Allman Brothers being from Macon, you know, and Otis Redding, and y'all being from Wonder Robins, man, that place is is blessed with such a wide music variety. Oh yeah, don't, don't forget Little Richard. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I mean, dude, the list goes on down there. And uh, I seen like where they were uh, redoing the old uh, recording studio there in Macon, too, where Skinner and Marshall Tucker Band and all them guys recorded. I can't wait to go visit that place. Yeah, man, I want to go see that, too. I'd be uh, really interested to see where all that history came from. Yeah, man. I, I've, uh, I just now got a chance to go to the big house for the first time this year where the Allman Brothers did their thing, man, and that was a crazy experience. Really? Actually, Lamar Williams, who is another great singer here, his dad, Lamar Williams Sr., was in the Allman Brothers. He used to be on the road with us, and his, I guess his dad played bass in the Allman Brothers or something. Wow. And... So that was pretty cool. Yeah, man. I mean, when it comes to rap and rock and roll country, like I said, man, that, that area has just been blessed down there. And I've been uh, hearing about a lot of uh, new artists coming out of the area, too, man. So it's it's good that that tradition, you know, is kind of keeping on a little bit. Oh, for sure. For sure, man. And, you know, everybody's just getting older and there's more of them coming. Yeah, man. It, it's you a know? beautiful thing to see. And, you know, like, one thing that I've always appreciated about y'all, man, is, like, in every concert that I've been to with y'all and every music video that I've watched, you've always had on your, like, Warner Robin shirt, man. And that's one thing that I always thought was so cool, that you didn't do what a lot of artists do. You know, like, we were talking about Young Jeezy earlier, and just say whatever the biggest city is, whatever's closest to you, and say that you're from there. You've always repped your hometown, man. You've never forgot your roots. Why was that always so important to you? I, I guess it really started when when I went out to L.A. to shoot a video, and they were trying to get me to wear, like, fur coats and gator shoes and just, you know, I don't know. I don't know why, but they had me all dressed up like a pimp for some reason. And I was like, yeah, my people aren't going to dig this. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, well, so they took all the wardrobe out. I just said, what do you want? I said, just get me a T-shirt with one of Robin's on it. How about that? And, <laughs> and they went and got some made real quick and brought them back. And that's what I wore. That's what I wore. And I still have one. But I... <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I just thought that that was always cool, man, because, like, you know, that that just gives a lot of uh, kids in small towns like that some motivation, you know? Like, whenever I first, of course, I got turned on to y'all's music back in the day whenever you released uh, Southern Discomfort, and I heard Sitting at a Bar for the first time on the radio. I thought it was a, a dope mm -hmm. song. And then whenever I like seen the music video for it, I seen you had the Warner Robins shirt on. I'm like, there's no way that's like the same Warner Robins that I'm thinking about. And then like I done some Google, I'm like, oh man, that that's that's so dope. Like it, like it gives kids motivation that you can come from a small town and still do big things. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, and especially now, man, when back when I was first getting into it, it was a little harder. But now, you know, with, we're way in the future now to still talking about the Internet. But uh, the world has gotten smaller. Yeah. That thing. You know what I mean? And, you know, New York and L.A. and places like that aren't necessary anymore you know what i mean as far yeah. as getting on it I don't, I don't think you know kids without you know I, I don't know i was just always weird i guess i always just knew what i wanted to do i guess and that's mm-hmm. lucky you to know what they want to do you know what i mean is what i mean yeah i get what you're saying and you know i'm, I'm almost jealous of the younger generation how easy the internet has made it for them but but it's a beautiful thing too man because nowadays you can just if you got a good laptop some good recording software maybe a beat machine and a good mic you can make really good quality stuff in your bedroom if you want to you ain't got to go to these big cities and be around these money hungry soul sucking individuals you can do everything right there in the comfort of your home and make just as big of an impact it's crazy to think about oh yeah it is crazy to think about and i love that you use money hungry soul sucking individuals yeah man because you know it's it's full of them and now nowadays artists can go independent you know and not have to be around any of those three-piece suit dudes that don't know anything about music yeah yeah for sure for sure it's a it's a beautiful thing for artists to be able to have more say so in what they put out to you know yeah man it's it's really a a freeing experience and i think that's why we're getting some uh, really dope music out of it man but but with you i'd love to go back to the beginning man i love to uh, explore this with artists that i'm really into what was the you know the reason and the motivation for you to even try out music in the first place uh, i mean i just came up in a um you know my grandmother was puerto rican and she had music playing all day long in the house i just always had music around and i used to sit in front of her, her record player when i was a kid and just go through records and go through records and i learned all the words and all of them and usually you know i guess because of uh, her background in music and where she was from that everything seemed very rhythmic and i was always and she was always tapping on things and i don't know i, I just i would think i got it from my grandmother and i always just loved it man i loved all kind of music and then you know of course the advent of hip-hop mm-hmm. then you know becoming popular when i was in my teens um well actually when i was in elementary school but real i mean i was just hooked you know what i mean it wasn't I just loved everything about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what was the one thing about hip hop that really drew you into it, man? Because like I, I've been noticing, you've been kind of diving back into the old school hip hop style with the the Danny Boone EPs that you've been releasing and stuff like that. I love that old school sound, man. What what about that kind of hooked you back in the day? Um, just you know, the beats, the rhymes, you know, um, style. I guess the principles of loyalty and uh i don't know i just loved it you know what i mean i I yeah i liked everything about it i wanted to be a part of it i mean of course i never considered anything like that as far as because i'm not from new york or la or something like that but i don't know i I just don't feel like for somebody to do whatever you want to do and i just decided that's what i was going to (laughs) do that's that's not whatever you want to do but it was it wasn't feasible at all for me to do get into it, but and my and I, I didn't really have much support because at the time there was no internet and people around here didn't have big big dreams necessarily like that at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of like, oh no, there's this crazy kid in town. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's this crazy kid in town that could really rhyme. 
And, and I would say, like, back oh, back then, man, you know, like, that was a, <clears throat> kind of a, a new thing for that area, too. Like, I, I know the rap game has really exploded in uh, Georgia nowadays, but, I mean, back back then, man, like, you didn't have Outkast. You, you didn't have T.I. Oh, no. and, and all these dudes. I'd say that was a... It, it was almost, well, you know, the term outcast thing to be into rap in middle Georgia back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, back, I mean, I'm talking about, yeah, like 1985. Yeah. And, yeah, nobody, it, it was, that was pretty much the village idiot. You know what I mean? Around here. <laughs> hey, but it worked out, man. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Me and all my fellow village idiots, let's put it that way. It was about 10 of us, but. Hey, but but that can that can show kids out there too, man. That just so uh, just because people don't understand you at this time, don't mean that they won't in the future. You know, and you know if you're enjoying it, who cares what other people think? That's right. That's right. I mean, there's so many thinkers these days; it don't matter. Yeah, you man. Know what I mean, everybody's thinking something on about something. Yeah, man. That, that old Damn. school hip hop sound, though, I've always loved. Like the old school Def Jam, you know, like Rick Rubin in his prime yeah. with LL Cool J, Run DMC, yeah. the Beastie Boys. Like the the first time that I heard, you know, License to Ill, like that blew my mind as a kid. Like it just, it, them, oh, them sure. old school hip hop beats, man, went so hard. Like this made you want to. Yeah, no doubt. And it's, it, it was a totally different feel back then. And it was all brand new. And it was had me. Man, I'd be riding down the road wanting to kick my windshield out. Yeah, it's man. Exciting. Yeah, and, and that, I mean? that's that's something that is like the the new rap. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I still like a lot of the stuff that comes out of it. You know, but like some, right. it's it's more like R and B nowadays. Like back in the day, man, I, I'd turn on Sabotage and I just want to flip over a car. You know, like it was there was energy to it. It was them the the boom. Uh, bat beats, I guess is what they used to call yeah. it back in the day. Man, that had some energy yeah. to it. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a lot more about originality back then, too. And you had to spit, too, man. Like, you had to, like, oh, bring yeah, your sure. A game. For sure. Yeah, man. I, you know, and I, I'm I'm an old school head, man. I'll still go back to listen to Big L, you know, and, and Big Pun and all those dudes. Like, it, that was just, it was, the, you know, the golden age of hip-hop, as they call it. And that's why I appreciate so much these, uh, the Danny Boone EPs that you've been releasing, man. I, and I know, like, you, you rap and you sing, but how involved are you in, like, the production side of your music, like making beats and stuff? Do you do that? On the uh, EPs that I've been putting out? Yeah. That's all me and uh, my boy Dakota's production. And then, uh, like, the new thing I got coming out with Mike Hart in it, which is more of a blues project, I guess-ish, mm-hmm. um, the Mike Hart that produced this new album that I got coming out called Sandcastles. And um, it, it, that's more of a, you know, he plays guitar, bass, plays a whole lot of instruments. And I can't do stuff like that. I'm just more of a hip-hop guy, but I can do other things that I'll... You know, like with Mike, he asked me to do an album, and I was, you know, going through some stuff and went up there, and he said, you know, I said, I'm just going to do whatever you want to do. You make the music, and I'm going to write lyrics, and I'll make them fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. Tapping them out, son. Yeah, man, that, that's that's dope to hear that you make beats, though, too, man. I think that, you know, uh, artists should dive in to that side of things, man. It's a it's it's a fun process, even if you're just messing around, man. Like to if you to get a beat machine and just mess around, it's a lot of fun, dude. Pressing those pads. Oh, for sure, yeah, man. I have a I have a uh, have a ball every night. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> every night. But you know, I I'd love to uh, talk to you about the song "Sitting at a Bar" too, man, because of course that's the song that like really got me into y'all, and I've got every album since then man but you know that that was such a, a mega song still to this day like uh, i'll be djing mm-hmm. at a bar or something like that and played and people just start singing their hearts out to that mm-hmm. song it's it was such a hit man what was the process behind making that song like how did sitting at a bar come about oh um, 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 we were in studio in atlanta at 
T-Sound Studios, me and Jason Brooks, were, Jason Brooks was in the band at that time, and um, he, uh, Cody Chestnut, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's a beast. Anyway, um, he came through when we first met him. He said, I got this little guitar line. And he was playing it, and he, he sang the hook. And so he wrote the hook and the guitar line. And I was like, oh, and I just started writing rhymes or writing the singing verses at the top. And then Brooks wrote him a rap verse and did it at the end. Mm -hmm. And he also did a beat. Brooks did a beat for the rap part. And we just all kind of put it together, and we weren't even... It was really kind of a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like we had this whole album that didn't have nothing like that on it except that song. And so we just packed it on the end and put it out. And we ended up getting dropped later, you know, went through that rhythm roll, went, got dropped. And then seven years later, somebody called and said, hey, where do we send your checks? This song that... So I tacked on to the end of this album is a hit. And he's like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that's basically how it happened. That, that, that's Thank that's goodness. cool, man. That that seems to happen a lot with hits, though. Like, it's, it's, it comes at the time when artists are just having fun and they're not even thinking about yeah. trying to make a hit. Exactly. I told so I, I wrote that the other day. I was like, you know, you can't try to make nothing great, but... You could try to make something. You know, you never know. What was it like for y'all like when you found out like just how big that song had gotten? It was awesome. I mean, it was just real like, uh, oh, my God. Because I wasn't doing I was working at the time. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to get a band together. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it was. And because uh, the first incarnation of Rehab had dissolved. And then, but... Then somebody called me, and it was just weird out of nowhere, and they just said, I own the name Rehab. You can have it back if you want to, and I got it. And I was like, oh, my God. So now I got the name Rehab, and I got the song to go sing. I can, it, it's going to afford me an opportunity to write some more songs. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And go out and perform them, and that's really kind of what yeah, it was awesome, man. It was like a new new lease on life after that first deal, you know? Yeah, man. I, I liked the version there on Southern Discomfort. That was the first album that I ever got from y'all, like right when y'all first came out. But whenever uh, I yeah. got the Graffiti the World album, man, how y'all cleaned it up and like kind of just remade it, that's my favorite version of that song. Like, not, like no disrespect to Hank Williams Jr., but that, uh, the, that, that album version, man, was... It was just clean, man. What uh, kind of like made y'all redo the song? What happened with, with that is there was the version that we did was on Epic, mm. the original version. And then record labels started coming at us again. And Universal was coming at us. and But they want their own version. You know, they're going to yeah. want their own version because when you go into the streams, you don't want epic beside it if you're on universal you won't you know what i mean they yeah, want their yeah. version in the in the algorithm or whatever the hell it's called and uh we did that with universal then epic decided well we'll show you and we'll blow up a, this version over here and start putting it out and since we know it's a hit so then you just kind of really got two people bigging up your song you know but yeah so yeah, um, going back to what we said earlier about the uh, blood sucking, well, soul sucking, money hungry individuals, man. This this game is full of them. Yeah, it's a tough, tough biz. But yeah, man, I I loved that al album, Graffiti the World, too, man. I I got that whenever <clears throat> I was 13 years old, man. Right before I moved up to Kentucky, that album is always held a special place in my heart, man. But I, I've loved all the albums. Since then, oh well, I need to ask you one more question about sitting at a bar. I about, I about forgot to ask this. I love the music video, man. But how did Danny Trejo become the bartender in that music video, man? I thought that that was hilarious. Was that a dusk till dawn thing? I don't know, I man. I really don't know what it was. I think you know, people at the 
uh, the uh, director, who I forget his name, excuse me, forgive me, uh, he hooked up the Danny Trejo thing. You know, we went out to L.A., and of course, you know, everybody's out there, and he showed up and was like, holy sh**, Danny Trejo, and <laughs> oh, uh, oh, John from Chips was in it, too. Man, I thought you know, that that's who that was. I, I I wasn't for sure though. Well, but yeah, man, I, I'm loving the uh, the new stuff that y'all are uh, doing right now. The the Galaga album was dope, man. The cover art blew my mind. That's the dopest cover art that y'all have done, in my opinion. But what made you go with the uh, you, <clears throat> the name Galaga, man? Like, were you a fan of the game back in the day or anything? What what was going on with that title? Uh, it's the only thing I, I mean it was the only game I could really play after Space Invaders I don't really know how to I was, I've never been a big gamer but mm-hmm. I do remember that Galaga was the go to and they're still around everywhere and for the song it was just I think I was running around and I just basically said I've been in the game like a quarter in Galaga I don't know that's just we just kind of ran with it, being silly. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you just do songs. You don't even really have no big big plan or message. You're just kind of throwing stuff together. <laughs> yeah, man, just having fun. That's right. That's all it is, man. And that's what it should be, I think. The, and it should be competitive as well. If a, com- a overly competitive person can drive themselves crazy. And mm-hmm. I'm not that competitive like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. you just start getting angry at a certain point and you're like, nah, yeah. All right, back to the fun. Let's get out of here. Yeah, man. I, that's why people get into music for the first for like in the first place anyway is is because it's fun. And, and I think that you can tell when an artist is having fun, man. That's that's the vibe that I got from that album. It's that album to me, man, is like every rehab album just put into one. Like every style, like every song that y'all have done. It, I feel like that that album kind of has a taste of everything that y'all have done. One of my favorite songs of y'all's that I think is really underrated is uh Thinking Again on Southern Discomfort. And I kind of got that vibe whenever I turned on Galaga for the first time and I heard I Know. I was like, oh, that kind of has a Thinking Again vibe to it. And I've always thought that song was underrated, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I, I, yeah, that was a crazy, crazy song. It's a crazy song. I think, yeah, Brooks made that beat. I think, yeah, on a emu or something like uh, Whatever they call it. Things. Roland. So, uh, what are you listening to right now, man? I, I like to ask artists that question. You know, like I, I listen to y'all all the time, but what are you listening to? Um, I don't listen to too much. I don't ride in the car with music, and I really, uh, I still listen to old music. Like, uh, I don't know, I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I listen to Steely Dan. Listen to. Uh, you know, all things old school hip hop, pretty much. Um, Souls of Mischief, uh, Beastie Boys, uh, anything that I like, I guess. I don't really know. And, and I do like old country, like classic country music from what you know, George Jones and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because their writing ability was just ridiculous. Yeah, and you know what? I do like the Dixie Chicks. I think they're badass. Yeah, man, their cover of Landslide was awesome. I, I thought it took like a lot of to cover a song like that, and I thought they killed it. You know, I, I know people. Oh, yeah. Stevie Nicks is Stevie Nicks, but they done a great job on that cover. Yeah, them girls are way beyond talented. Way beyond talented. Man, I can tell that like you have such a, a wide music variety man and it really shows in your music and you said this uh, the new album that y'all are going to be releasing uh sandcastles that's more of a, a blues project it's blues i mean it's got it's got it's still all over the place like most we have albums are you know what i mean there's yeah. different things in it but uh like we got a new single called them that matter don't mind and it's I guess more blues rock type thing. And then, you know, we got one that's kind of like surf rock on there. And then we got one that's, you know, it's just crazy, but it's just all a a singing album. It's not, no rhyming. 
Hey, I wanted to ask you about that, uh, them that don't matter song. Like, I was listening to that, man, and, and one thing that I've always, uh, kind of found with y'all is the, y'all's lyrics are almost poetic. Like, sometimes you really gotta think about what you're saying, and I, and I love the chorus to that song. Like, those that mind don't matter, and those that matter don't mind. Like, I, I, I had to pause the song, and I'm like, damn. What is what does that mean exactly? So so what is what do those lyrics mean to you? Well, I mean you know, song is if, if, don't remind him of his past that the fellas try to do right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because and then the mind don't matter and then the matter don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause, you know if somebody's trying to and I, you know I've heard that saying before several places. And it popped in my head that day, and I was like, you know, and I knew what it meant. Just I have several friends that have had tough times. We've all had tough times Mm -hmm. and had to go through things and change our lives around and do this and that. And, you know, when somebody's trying to do the right thing, a lot of other people will come over and just be like, yeah, whatever, dude. You're trying to. I remember when we used to be passed down, we'd step over you leaving the party. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now you want to be all clean or you know what I mean yeah and you know what I'm saying people just sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah baby it's the truth man it's the truth and and you know like you said in those in them lyrics though man like those that matter don't mind like, like to me yeah. the, the lyrics mean different things to everybody whenever I first heard that you know it, it's similar to what you were saying but like you know do whatever you want to do and those that really don't matter are going to mind and, and maybe not understand exactly why it is that you're doing what you do. But those that do matter, they're not going to mind because they understand. They know who you truly are. And they'll take the time to listen to the reason maybe you're doing what you do. Right, right, right. Yeah, I just, you know, and a lot of, you know, just, you know, just a little, little song. To make somebody think, it's like, you know what I mean? Just to trying to put a positive thought in somebody's head, you know. Mm-hmm. That's about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. Well, Which not that, not to be. I ain't trying to be like be better than anybody. I ain't saying that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. I know. I know exactly like, what you mean, man. Like we need more positive music like that. That's one vibe that I've always got from every single album that y'all have done, man. Me and my wife will, you know, put a CD like Gilligan's Travels there in the uh, CD player and and go on a road trip, man, and and just have a good time. That's what rehab has always been about to me, is is just good vibes and good music, man. And that's why I'm so thankful that y'all are still out there touring, making music, man, and, and, you know, staying true to what y'all do, man. Thank you so much for this opportunity, man. Like, you really have no idea just how much y'all's music has meant to me over the years and the impact that it has had. Really, man, y- y'all's music has really helped me through some hu- tough times, man. So thank y'all for everything that y'all have done throughout the years, man. And this has been an honor to speak with you today. Thank you, man. I appreciate you and all the support y'all give us and Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eli. Does anybody ever say, Eli, Eli, uh-oh? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, I, I get that. And also get uh, Eli's coming, of course. <laughs> I get it all, man. Yeah. But, dude, uh-huh. hey, Danny, thanks again, brother. All right, homeboy. Thank you.